Hello, my name is Dana Blickensdurfer and welcome to Art Talks. On this special episode, we are taking you to the heart of Miami Beach during Miami Art Week 2019 at our Jada Art Fair. During our fair, we interviewed our artists and residency program artists and key influencers that were a part of Jada Art Fair. Let's take a listen. So I wanted to um, take some time to interview the Jada artists because it was a, a community effort. So I'm Dana Blickensdurfer. I'm here with our Jada artist, Aaron Bauman Jackson. Welcome. Thank I'm Kate. you. So Aaron, this was your first time in Miami? Uh, not my first time in Miami, but my first time with Miami Art Week. Yeah? Yes. So what was your impression of it this week? Uh, very cool. Very cool. I don't, uh, you know, not being in sort of the thick of the mania, uh, I think was nice for sort of my first time here. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think the event went off very well and the content that you guys put together was fantastic. So, All right. so far so good. And where are you from? I am a native Chicagoan, uh, native but Chicago. I live in Wichita, Kansas. And uh, tell us a little bit about how you got involved in the arts. Uh, and a little bit about your background. Yeah, I mean, I've been painting for 25 years. Um, I mean, I think art has always been a passion. I actually, my mom just uh, offloaded a bunch of my stuff. Um, and in, in a, one of the boxes was this, uh, like a diary that they keep of like what you do, like first grade, second grade, third grade. And they ask you all sorts of questions like, what's your favorite color? What do you want to be when you grow up? Um, and my answer to the second question was always artist, artist, artist. Except really? one, one year I wanted to be a police officer for some reason. All the way back then. Yeah. That's cool. Um, so yeah, I've just been painting for, for 25 years. It's more of like an outlet and a hobby and nothing really serious or commercially until uh, recently when uh, probably the biggest reason was, uh, or the biggest sort of kick was my wife saying we're out of space in the house. Why don't you go and try and sell some of this stuff? Oh, that's where the push came from. Yeah. Because you put everything, you made all your work and then you just put it in the house and lined everything up and gave it to the family. No, it's in storage rooms in the house. Oh, so, yeah. In, in the closets, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that was your urgency, like a support system. To yeah. Kind of say, this may be a good time. Yeah. Yeah. And um, you, well, your first show was recently, right? Uh, I've done a lot of local shows in local Wichita. Show. I did a, a, one in Topeka. Um, but the first sort of outside of the state border was in D.C. Uh, a few weeks ago. How'd that go? It went great. That's where we met. Yeah, we met that's in where D.C. We met and, uh, yeah, I had a very good show. So it was love ever since. Love ever since. So tell us a little bit about what inspires your artwork. Um, probably the biggest thing is really is just composition. So as uh, my background is in architecture, and so I really just like the arrangement of things. Um, and so my art is very much about sort of the most simplest form of mark making, which is scribbling. And so um, I like to just get that into something that can, you know, I, I scribble, whether it's after a three hour meeting, you got a little doodle at the sort of the corner of your notebook or you're in a hotel room and it's the pad in the hotel uh, or it's your sketchbook. Um, and then I get to uh, a point where one of the scribbles actually starts to say something and whether that's whether it's saying something It's just simply an image that's recognizable um, Or it's actually starting to tell a story There's a narrative to it then that is what I take and sort of manipulate and massage and then eventually translate that to a canvas So what do you mean by narrative? Do you kind of like do cutouts and like or do you push a drawing multiple times like what do you mean by narrative in your work? When I mean, I'm not trying to tell a story. Oh, so, okay. so when I'm initially putting together a piece of work, I'm not trying to tell a story, but a story develops as you're putting the work together. So it's almost like the piece tells you the story. Kind of like a subconscious process you have? Kind of, yes. Kind of, yeah, subconscious on the back end, but on the front end, it's very conscious. Yeah. So when I'm scribbling, it's not like I'm in some, uh, you know, some deep mental state, some sun kind it's it's very conscious drawing yeah. and mark making. That's that's exciting because a lot of artists, you know, their process is very different and it seems like you utilize a lot of mark making and drawing before you go onto the canvas. Correct. Now how is there a certain time frame? Do you do a certain amount of drawings or are you just before you paint, what's that process like? 
Uh, so there usually is a lot of drawings. I'd say 90% of them are, are not worthy of going to a canvas. Yeah, don't say that. Um, you don't know that until you... And then, yeah, and once I get to something that I think would could translate well to a canvas, I work that. So, you know, yeah. that, that scribble becomes another scribble and another scribble until it gets tighter where it's it really it's ready to go up to, onto a canvas. When you do your drawings, are you using like pen or charcoal? What's your pencil? Uh, pen, pencil, crayon, okay. lipstick. Crayon, lipstick, that's <laughs> cool. Yeah. That's, I could see that with the rawness. Yeah. I'd love to see your original drawings. That yeah. would be cool to see them next to your paintings. That's a great idea. And uh, so about your paintings, um, is there, do you work it in one session? What's the process of your development? Uh, it is definitely not in one session, um, and that's only because I have a day job. Um, and that's so, fine. Yeah. We all do, right? Sometimes. Yeah. Artists, full time. But you, I like that you're a business owner as well. I can relate to that too. Yeah. But it's no, it's anytime I can get into the studio and yeah. usually I have, I'm sure it's like many artists, I have five or six projects going at the exact same time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us, we're sitting in the exhibition space of Jada Art Fair. Can mm -hmm. you tell us a little bit of the work you're displaying this uh, during Miami Art Week 2019? Uh, yeah, it's very much about what I just described. I mean, all of it, all the five pieces that I have here are all uh, derived from scribbles. Okay. Um, they're not all recent, uh, so I have a piece from 17, I think I have a piece from 18, and then everything else is from this year. Awesome. Do you guys have any questions for, uh, for Aaron from the audience? Why are you keeping your paintings in the closet instead of them? We were out of wall space also. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, then initially they were saying that it was only on the closet, and I was like, why? <laughs> okay, but. <laughs> What are some of your influences? Do you have any artists who are influencing you in the way you make art? Um, a little bit. Um, I mean, I'm very, uh, a lot of people look at my work and immediately they say Picasso. Uh, I am a fan of Picasso, but I, you know, of the Cubists, I'm more of a Juan Gris fan. Um, I very much like Le Corbusier. I don't know if you guys know him. He's also an architect, but an amazing painter. Um, but I like the Expressionists too. Um, I'm a Basquiat fan. Um, I like Karen Appel, um, so those would probably be my top four or five. What uh, What's it, a day in the like of your studio? Um, well, day in the like is I'm escaping as much as I can from my office into the studio. So it's like a real escape of your reality? Sure. Yeah? Yeah. I think that's kind of for all artists, right? It's a bit of an outlet bit of your Zen moment mm -hmm. yeah I like that yeah where do you see what do you what are your plans for 2020 to, like I I know you're talking about leaving the day job and be a full-time artist we'll what, have to edit that out what would that look like <laughs> for you next year or what's your do you have goals like what do you want to where uh, do you see your work so I don't have really any financial goals, but I have uh, goals in terms of continuing to produce work and to get out into more markets and just test test more markets. Yeah. So what do you think the feedback was this week? I know you had really great feedback in Washington. What kind of feedback did you have this weekend that you feel that you can take away with? Um, I think it was uh, similar to D.C. I mean, just, you know, a, a lot of good um Constructive feedback, but a lot of good, just you know, compliments. So yeah, um, hopefully they were genuine. <laughs> yeah. No, I think I think we're really lucky to we're really lucky to have you in the show. Um, what are there any positive feedbacks you can give about like Jada Art Fair and your experience this weekend? Like three tips that you could take away that you learned as you're going throughout the fair and like learning how to maneuver through the art market? Three tips? One tip. Okay. Let's start with one tip. Yeah, let's start with one tip. Um, I think may, maybe uh, seek out sort of the audience more. Um, I mean, there was such great content that you don't really want to miss any of that as well, but I think you need to make an effort to get out and start talking to your people and show them show them uh, your art as much as possible. So, Networking. Yeah. He, he did really good. Uh, every time we had art tours, he was very involved in, you know, practicing and, and talking about your artwork and being put on the spot. So I was really proud of you. You did awesome this weekend. 
Um, and what did you think about the content from the the media panel? Great, great. It, it was it was uh, diverse, but definitely just on point for you know the audience here. So yeah, yeah. I got smarter. You got smarter. Yeah, that's always important. Yeah. Well, I can't think of any other questions at the moment. Does anyone have any other questions? We kind of talked about, you know, a little bit about Aaron's background, his development of his process and his work, and a little bit about what we got from this weekend at the fair. One more question from anyone? One question? No? Sarah. Are you going to ask me what my spirit animal was? <laughs> <laughs> What's your next step? Uh, continue to paint and to continue to try and participate in events like this. That's really the next step. Any, uh, are you going to do other mediums? Um, I don't know. I mean, uh, I had a good conversation with Jonatas uh, earlier just about, you know, video. Um, and I think there could be really some really cool opportunities with you know this scribble concept with you know, with some you know just showing some some just the live live, live scribbling the process um, and I think there's some other things that I could possibly do uh, with three D art um, I'm thinking strings oh uh, that's awesome ropes. Um, so yeah I don't know well, we we'll we'll look see. we look forward we're gonna hold you to that. Okay. In a couple of months, we look forward to seeing this develop further and sharing that with us. Great. Um, so thank you, Aaron, for your time. Give him a round of applause. Thank you. Oh, you have one question? Hi. 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 Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Just, just from the, just from the, yeah, it's just from the networking and, and meeting people and, you know, learning what you can do better. And, and again, the workshops were great. The, the panels were great, so yes, very worthwhile. Well, thank you. I'd be happy to come back. Miami welcomes you. Okay. Thank you.